mean to be a citizen? Who is allowed into our country and whom do we keep out? What rights does citizenship give us? What abuses should it protect us from? These are some of the dilemmas of modern Europe and they're not new, but history offers some very different answers. Two thousand years ago, citizenship was also at the top of the Roman political agenda. Even here, among those who came to dip their toes in the water at the very fringes of the Roman Empire, the Roman Bath. I'm not sure that they have any lessons to teach us. As such, history doesn't provide a ready-made list of do's and don'ts. But we can see some of our debates reflected in theirs and get a usefully destabilising glimpse of some very different assumptions and conclusions. Roman citizenship meant immunity from cruel and degrading punishments, such as crucifixion. But protection was only part of it. Roman citizenship was also a mechanism for incorporating outsiders as much as for excluding them. There were no citizenship exams, no fees to be paid, no singing the national anthem. And Romans thought it was absolutely normal for someone to be a citizen of and loyal to the place they came from and Rome. There were none of Norman Tebbit's infamous cricket tests here. I doubt the Romans would have cared very much which side you cheered in some international sporting fixture. When the Emperor Caracalla gave citizenship to every single free inhabitant of the Roman Empire, that made citizens out of 30 million of them at a stroke. It was the biggest grant of its kind in the whole of human history. Ask a Roman where their race came from and they would point to their two founding fathers, Aeneas, a refugee from the war at Troy, and Romulus, who attracted citizens to his new city by declaring it an asylum and welcoming runaways and criminals. Rome saw itself as a city of asylum seekers. They would, I suspect, have been more baffled than horrified by the scenes at our borders and on our beaches. Don't imagine, though, that this was some early version of a liberal migration policy. Citizenship and alliances with Rome brought obligations as well as privileges. And the main obligation was to fight. Rome didn't get big because it was more militaristic than its neighbors. And it didn't get big because it had better equipment or tactics. It was because Rome could put more boots on the ground. But it wasn't all trouble free. Eventually, after Caracalla's mass citizenship grant, they did begin to police their borders. And one way of seeing the barbarian invasions of the late empire was as a swarm of economic migrants and political refugees which by then Rome couldn't handle. Their river Danube was in some ways our Calais. They face many of the same tensions that we do, in particular between the rights of the citizen and the demands of homeland security. In 63 BC, Marcus Tullius Cicero famous orator, philosopher, and star of modern novels, claimed to have uncovered a plot to eliminate leading politicians and to burn the city of Rome down. He rounded up the suspects and executed them without trial, claiming legitimacy under an early equivalent of the Prevention of Terrorism Act. But he didn't get away with it. He was soon exiled for flouting citizens' rights, his house was torn down and a shrine of the goddess Liberty was erected on its site. Is it just me 
who finds an eerie similarity here with drone strikes against British citizens by British drones. There were plenty of other occasions too when the protection of citizenship wasn't worth the paper it was written on. Kiwus Romanus sum, I am a Roman citizen. It was the plea uttered by an unfortunate Roman citizen, resident of Sicily, who was being crucified on a trumped up charge by a rogue Roman governor of the island. As he died on the cross, he shouted out repeatedly, Kiwis Romanus sum, as if to claim his immunity from crucifixion and his right to a proper trial in Rome. It didn't make a blind bit of difference. For us, at a time when citizenship, what is effectively a modern European superstate, is something so many thousands of people desperately want, maybe we too should be wondering whether we can deliver on the privileges, rights and protection that that citizenship claims to offer. <laughs>